Hi. So this far, we've talked about simple harmonic motion, and we've talked about simple pendula, essentially where all the mass is concentrated in one single uh, point, and where the uh, string is a massless string. Today, we'll talk about physical pendula, so more realistic uh, systems where um, essentially not all the mass is necessarily concentrated in one single point. And so here's a few examples. Uh, of course, a famous example is uh, Foucault's pendulum. Um, and so by the end of this lesson, you should be able to show um, that also a physical pendulum will result in simple harmonic motion um, for small um, displacements. And you should be able to apply the equation for simple harmonic motion to determine uh, the period, frequency, length, or moment of inertia of a pendulum. So again, this is a physical pendulum, a simple pendulum uh, demonstrated. All the mass is essentially concentrated in the bob right here, and you have a long arm, which is a massless uh, string. The sort of systems that we're going to talk about in this uh, lesson are physical pendula. And so mass distributions will be different and can, can be fairly arbitrary. Um, and they will be essentially suspended from a pivot point. Uh, in this case, it's the end of this baseball bat here. That doesn't necessarily have to be like that. Any pivot point uh, will do. And so um, we'll start oscillations by essentially uh, slightly nudging it um, and make it oscillate from that pivot point. And so that's the sort of motion, the sort of oscillations that we're going to describe um, right now. And so remember what we want to do is we want to come up with an equation of motion. So we're going to use Newton's second law uh, to figure out what that equation of motion is and um, what will come out if this would be simple harmonic motion, which, which this should be um, essentially a second order um, differential equation. So before we could actually just use um, the law of gravity, in this case, actually, it's a little bit more complicated. So if we now say that we have our mass um, rotating around this pivot point here, and if we denote center of mass right there, then essentially what's going to happen is that this whole mass is going to rotate essentially around that pivot point. Um, and here's the angle theta of um, that rotation. So we can describe essentially the motion that's going to happen of this um, this physical pendulum uh, by applying what we know about motion of that sort of object. And so a few things to note here, we say that the pivot point, wherever it may be, that's the, that's the fixed point. Um, and we'll have to characterize the center of mass. And so the distance from the pivot point to the center of mass, that is where uh, we'll call that L, that's the length uh, in this case. So it's not the length of the entire pendulum, but it's essentially the distance from the pivot point to the center of mass. We'll call theta the angle from the vertical. So we're um, assuming here that the vertical essentially is the um, represents the equilibrium position. Okay, and so um, gravity acts on this object and typically acts um, at the center of mass. And so this is going to be a rotation uh, exercise. And so what do we know about rotation? Well, um, we know that Newton's second law essentially is described. Uh, by using the moment of inertia and actually the torque on the object. And so given that gravity acts here on the center of mass, which is different actually from the pivot point, um, that the force of gravity will, in this case, um, exert a torque on that object. And so that torque is, is the length of uh, the, so the distance between the pivot point and the center of mass that we called L, times the magnitude of the force, times the sine of the angle between the two. And that angle, of course, um, we have called theta here. So this is the torque that's going to act on this object. Now, there's a minus sign in here. And that is because if you see what's gonna, what this uh, torque is going to uh, do, it's going to actually rotate the system back to the equilibrium position. So that torque will um, try to restore our, our physical pendulum to the equilibrium position. So it's a restoring torque, and that's why, why there is that minus sign there. Okay, so then we're ready to use Newton's second law. So Newton's second law for rotation, if you remember from the fall term, is that tau equals I alpha, where tau is now the um, torque, I is the moment of inertia, and alpha here is the angular acceleration. And so the angular acceleration is the rate of change of that angle theta with respect to time, but it's the second um, derivative, okay? So alpha is d squared theta over dt squared. Um, if we essentially plug that into this um, equation for Newton's second law, we find that the torque is 
moment of inertia i times d squared theta over dt squared. So that's what we're going to have to work with. Now, before we had already found an expression for the torque, so let's just um, plug that in. So here's the expression that we found for the torque before, minus lmg times the sine theta. Um, and this is our equation of motion. And so equating both expressions essentially, right? So we plug in the tau value right in here. You find a minus lmg times the sine of theta equals i d squared theta over dt squared. Um, and like before, this is a little bit annoying because we have a sine theta in here and we have a theta in here in our uh, derivatives. Um, so what we will do here is the same as we've done before. We're going to make the small angle approximation. And so this is a limitation for these oscillations. We're essentially going to say that, that the displacements from our equilibrium positions are going to be small. Right? And so if that's the case, if, if that's what we do for small angles theta, you can actually verify yourself that for small angles theta, the sine of theta is all approximately equal to theta. And if we plug that in, uh, we actually get a much simpler equation. Now minus lmg theta is i d squared theta over dt squared. And so we now get this equation of motion right here. d squared theta over dt squared is minus mgl over i times theta. Okay, so let's copy that over to the next page here. So this is the same equation that we found before. And so if you look at this, this is the same mathematical form as the equations that we've, we've seen before, the same mathematical form as for the mass spring system, the same mathematical form as for the simple pendulum. The only thing that's different is, is the variables that we use and, and uh, some of the constants here in front of the theta. But it's a second order derivative of a variable, in this case theta, with respect to time. There is a minus sign because it's um, a restoring force um, and is linear in theta. So there's a constant, all these are constant times theta. Okay, and so we know that if we have that uh, mathematical form for our equation of motion, we know that the solution is simple harmonic motion. And so in this case, our variable is theta, right? So that means that theta will actually, uh, we will be able to describe theta with a um, sinusoidal function. So we can actually say that theta as a function of time is going to be a times the cosine of omega t plus phi, which is simple harmonic motion again. Okay, the only thing that's different here compared to our simple pendulum is that um, our angular frequency omega is in this case, of course, determined by this constant right here. And so you find that for a physical pendulum, omega square is mgl over i. Okay. And if you remember for the simple pendulum, what we actually found was that there was g over l. Here we find that it's mgl over i. So it looks on first sight uh, very different in, in form. Um, and actually, let's compare it to a simple pendulum perhaps. Okay, So for our physical pendulum, we find simple harmonic motion, but um, with this more complicated um, angular frequency. So could we approximate our simple pendulum as a physical pendulum? Well, we can, of course, right? And if you consider that you have a very long arm where all the mass is concentrated at the end, and that's what you rotate about. Essentially, um, that means if you describe your moment of inertia um, um, as that system where you have all the mass concentrated in um, one mass at a distance L away from the pivot point, the moment of inertia is simply ML square. And if you plug in the moment of inertia in the expression for the angular frequency, okay, so omega square is now mgl over ml square, right? Because that's the moment of inertia. Just plug that in. M drops out, one of the Ls drops out, and you find g over L, which is exactly the same result, of course, as we got before for the simple pendulum. And so essentially, simple pendulum is just um, um, one limiting case for the physical pendulum. The expression for the physical pendulum is um, much more uh, generally applicable. Okay, but so the key point is that again you find that a simple pendulum, or sorry, a physical pendulum is also undergoing simple harmonic motion. And so, in summary, for both the simple pendulum and the physical pendulum, you find that if the oscillation is small, that's that's what's required because we need to make a small angle approximation. Uh, you will find that they undergo simple harmonic motion. Um, and in fact, you can show that that actually is true for almost every other system. As long as there is a linear restoring force, the resulting motion is simple harmonic. And that's a key result, really. Any linear restoring force 
meaning that if, if you have a force that's trying to restore that equilibrium and that force is linear in the displacement, so whether that's x or theta, that doesn't matter. If it's linear in that displacement, you will always find that the resulting motion is a simple harmonic. And so this is kind of the general description of um, what that equation of motion looks like. So it's the second derivative of uh, the position with respect to time is minus, because it's a restoring force, omega square. So some uh, that's, that's going to be our angular frequency, but that can be any combination of constants times x. So that's what makes it essentially linear in x. If that's the functional form for your equation of motion, you will always end up with simple harmonic motion. So here's an example to try out um, to use what we learned about physical pendula, uh, about leg oscillation. So what we're doing in this exercise is we're going to model um, essentially our leg by a physical pendulum. So when you walk, your leg swings forward like a pendulum. And if you model your leg as a uniform rod with a total length of 90 uh, centimeters uh, rotating around this pivot point here, calculate the time it will take you to take one step. Try that first, and we'll post the solutions in a different video. <laughs>